What is up, Impact Crew? Hey, it's Pastor Matt here. I am actually here on my old college campus, Bethany University. Uh, I know last week, or actually on Wednesday on our Zoom call, uh, we were going over a couple of things to look out for when we're looking for a good, godly connection with people. And this is actually where it all started for me. That is actually my old dorm room right behind me, and that is where I found so many incredible friendships, incredible men of God that are still in my life today. And so today, before we get started, I just wanna preface it by saying, we're going to be taking a look at a couple more things to look for as we are going out and as we are trying to make good godly connections with people, good God-honoring friendships that are going to push us to be better, push us to be more like Jesus in everything that we do. So uh, I just want to say I love you guys so much. A couple announcements and then we're going to dive into what we have for today. All right. Hey, announcement number one. Boom. Actually, by the way, that's where I used to get my mail. Didn't used to look like that, but it does now. Announcement number one. Hey, if you are not a part of our Zoom calls, every Wednesday at 7 p.m., we are doing a live Zoom for our Impact crew. We want you to be a part of it. If you guys need the link, I will drop my email down below in this video. Make sure that you guys shoot me an email. If you guys have my number, you guys can shoot me a call or text, and I will make sure to get you guys the, the link for that Zoom. Please, man, I love seeing you guys. I love connecting with you. I love seeing what's going on in your guys' life, especially throughout this quarantine time. So join us on Zoom every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Okay, hey, second thing, number two. Doo, boo, boo, boo. Uh, number two thing is that uh, we were open this last Sunday and we are not open any anymore. Uh, it looks like we are shut down once again, but uh, we also want to make sure that everyone's safe. We want to make sure that everyone's doing well. So if you guys need something, hey, please don't hesitate to, again, shoot me a call, text. Find us on Instagram at the underscore impact underscore crew. Shoot us a DM. We would love to get connected with you, bring you guys over some gifts, some things to get you through. And uh, yeah, we'll open up as soon as we can. We will let you guys know. You guys will be the first. Uh, stay tuned for our Zoom calls and these uh, online Sunday morning videos. Uh, we love you guys so much, Impact Crew. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. What's up, Impact? Hey, Pastor Matt here. I just got back from an amazing day in Santa Cruz. It was so awesome being able to go and uh, look around my old college campus where so many of my, my lifelong lasting friendships uh, actually began. And uh, I just wanted to kind of continue that conversation that we that we started on Wednesday. For those of you who didn't join in, we talked about how friendships are so important, how we are we were made to be relational beings. That's how God made us. And in that, we want to make sure that we are intentional in the kind of friends that we choose uh, to be and to be around. So I just want to quickly go over the three things that we talked about last Wednesday just this last Wednesday on Zoom before we get into the next three things uh, as we're looking to have intentional friendships that honor God and help push us to be more like Jesus. The first thing that we talked about was out of Hebrews chapter 10, 24 through 25, says this, it says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing, drawing near. Now, this is one of the questions that we were talking about in asking yourself in in when you're finding good quality friends that are going to pu push you to be more like Jesus. The first question you need to ask yourself that we went over on Wednesday was, are they pursuing the things of God? When you're looking for friends and you're being intentional about, about finding friends who will help you be more like Jesus, you need to ask yourself first, are they pursuing the things of God? It's so easy to find people who look like us, talk like us, uh, they, they sing like us, they like like us, they do like us, they eat like us, they, they do all these things. But you know what? That's not the number one quality. The number one quality is finding people who pursue the things of God, who love Jesus wholeheartedly. Listen, I know uh, there's a lot of people in my life that know God, but I want to be friends with, I want to intentionally seek out the people who who love God, who want to serve God, who they want to pursue God with all of their hearts. So the first question that we want to ask again from last week was, are they pursuing the things of God? Okay. Hey, number two, as we recap from last Wednesday and the questions that we need to be asking ourselves as we pursue intentional friendships that will help us be more like Jesus. The second one was this, how do they talk to other people? When I'm looking for friends, man, when I was in college and I found these lifelong friends, I noticed how they talk to people. And it was so important that I found people who loved, uh, loved people like Jesus did. Proverbs 16, 28 says, troublemakers plant seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. 
Oh man, how true it is. There, there are hardly, there are hardly worse friends than those who just continually gossip. Man, terrible. It tears people up. It causes strife and, and trouble between friends, and it's just, it's all bad. So I want to ask the question: Is it, when I'm looking for friendship and somebody who's gonna, who's gonna push me to be more like Jesus? It, I want to know how do they talk to other people? Do they love people like Jesus does? Proverbs twenty nineteen says, "A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks." too much. Ephesians 4.29, we went over as well on Wednesday. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. How do they talk to people as you're searching out relationship, as you're searching out friendship, and you're being intentional about it? You want to find the God-honoring people? Ask yourself that question. How do they talk to people and then ask yourself how you're talking to people as well. It's a huge indicator and in, in where you're at with Jesus as well. So I, I encourage you guys ask that question as you're searching out friends who will push you to be more like Jesus. All right, number three, as we recap last week uh, on Wednesday, it is the question that you want to ask yourself as you're seeking out these friends. Will they speak the truth in love? And we looked at Proverbs 27, 5 and 6. It says, an open rebuke is better than hidden love. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. Man, we talked about that a lot when we were going through our Proverb a Day Challenge, and it's so true today as we look at it again, is when I'm searching out friends, listen again, I said it in the first point, it's easy to find people who look like us, talk like us, act like us, sing like us, eat like us, uh, like the 49ers, of course, because they're the only team in the NFL that's really worth it. Uh, just kidding, I'm sorry, Dejour. Um, Like the Oakland A's as well, uh, all these things. It's so easy to find people who totally agree with us, but you know what? I want to find the friends who will speak the truth to me and not just speak the truth to me, but speak the truth to me in love. So awesome. Uh, I, I hope this encouraged you guys. If you guys didn't watch our Wednesday night video, all of those things we went through in depth. This is just a little recap. Now we're going to take a look at a couple more questions as we seek out God honoring friends to help push us further. All right, hey, brand new. We're gonna be looking at three new questions to ask ourselves as we look at finding God-honoring friendships, people who are gonna push us to be more like Jesus, who aren't gonna pull us down, but they're gonna push us up, and they're gonna be lifetime friends. Uh, we need to be asking ourselves a number of questions. You guys just heard three that we went over on Wednesday. We're gonna be going through three quick ones today as well. First, I wanna just share again, if you guys weren't with us on Wednesday, man, we talked about Jesus taking care of the emptiness in our soul. He does that, and then our friendships take care of our loneliness. This is the way that God created humans, to be relational, to have connection with one another. But with that connection, we know that there can be some poor connections. We know there can be some bad influences. So we, as Christians, wanna make sure that we're always intentionally seeking out good friendships. The first question as we look into today is this, that we should be asking ourselves in searching out for friends is, are you refreshed when you are around them? Are you, a are you refreshed when you are around them? Man, I've been around some people who just drain me more and more and more and more. And you know what? I hate to say this, but there's been some times where I was the friend who was doing the draining, where I was just negative and negative and negative, and I was just draining my friends. And man, the Lord came in, and the Lord Lord was speaking to my heart, and I realized I don't want to be the friend that just continuously takes away. I want to be the friend that refreshes, that encourages, that uplifts others. And that's what we need to be looking for as Christians, is are you refreshed when you're around them? It's a great signifier of whether or not we should be with somebody. And listen, I just talked about it, uh, finding friends who will speak the truth in love. I'm not talking Talking about refreshed as in making everything peachy keen and amazing i'm talking about ref sometimes being refreshed for me is somebody really telling me the truth even though i don't really want to hear it but i know i need to hear it that can be a, a type of refreshing it's a it's a type of honesty and it refreshes me proverbs 27 9 says just as lotions and fragrance give delight a sweet friendship refreshes the soul a sweet friendship refreshes the the soul. I want to be a refresher and I want to find people who will help refresh me as well. So I want you guys to keep this in mind as you're looking for those lifelong friends. Are you refreshed when you're around them? And also try and apply that to your own life as well. What kind of friend are you? All right, number two that we're going to be talking about, no, the second question that we're going to ask ourselves as we're looking for those lifelong friends. Man, I was reminded of this as I was walking the former Bethany campus. There were countless times where you know what, I just wasn't quite straight. I wasn't quite quite doing it. 
I, uh, you know, it's not like I was, I was doing anything bad per se, but I needed friends in my life to come in and really straighten me up and really ask some hard questions. This is the second question that we should be asking ourselves as we look for those God honoring friends is, are you challenged to become better because of them? When you're looking at your friends, ask yourself this, are you challenged to become better because of them. Man, that is a huge thing. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. We talked about that again in our Proverb a Day Challenge. The wisdom that comes from that. Iron sharpening iron. The grinding down. The making sharp. I want to make sure that I'm helping somebody become better. And likewise, I want to make sure that somebody isn't dulling me. That they're sharpening me as well. I want to encourage you guys, hey, if you guys have some friends, ask this question. Are they helping to make you better? Are they pushing you to be more like Christ? Are they elevating your faith? Man, it's huge. And also apply that to you. What kind of a friend are you? Are you pushing others to be more like Jesus as well? So ask that question. Are you challenged to become better because of them? Okay, number three, uh, the third question that we should be asking ourselves and then also applying to our own life is this. Are you able to have accountability with them are you able to have accountability with them james chapter 5 verse 16 says confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results the question is are you able to have accountability with them and I love this because, again, I just got back from Santa Cruz. I'm a little sunburnt, but I remember about the friendships that were created in that place, the God-honoring friendships. And now to this day, I still have brothers who will hold me accountable, who I can be accountable to, who, man, I know they got my back. I know they're going to speak the truth and love to me, but I also know that they're going to hold me accountable at all costs because, not because they hate me, not because they want to see me fall, but because they love me. They love me like a brother, a true brother. And with that, I want you to ask yourself, are you able to have accountability with your friends? And then apply it to your own life. Are you able to be accountable or, or, or is somebody else able to be accountable to you? Will you hold them? Will you uphold them? Will you, will you pray with them? Will you strengthen them? Will you tell them when something's not, not right? Will you be there for them like a brother or a sister truly should be? So I want to do this real quick. The third one again, are you able to have accountability with them? We all were created to have relationships. We were all created. I said it before, Jesus takes care of the emptiness, man. He takes care of the emptiness, but our friends take care of the loneliness while we're here on this earth. And these are three important questions that we should be asking ourselves as we develop intentional friendships that help us be more like Jesus each and every day. Impact. I just want to encourage you guys, man. I love you. I hope you guys are asking yourself those questions as you guys are finding those those God honoring friends. Man, I, it's been a decade since I've been in college and, and I've still got some incredible, incredible friends, uh, one of which is actually my brother in law now. Uh, go figure. But I just want to quickly share with you guys, man, the characteristics of some godly friendships uh, that I have encountered is unconditional love. I hope you guys, and my prayer is that you guys find, pe find people who will have unconditional love for you. I also hope you guys find, pe find people, friendships, who will support you during trials, who will be there no matter what through thick and thin. I hope and pray that you'll be able to find friends who will stand in the gap for you, and I hope you'll do the same for your friends. The next thing is, is man, I hope you find people who are genuinely happy for your successes. I hope you find people who, who don't want to see you fall, who don't want to see you fail, but instead have genuine happiness when you succeed. Also, I hope you find friends who, who will uh, give you edifying conversations. Man, they will, they will lift you up. They will encourage you. They will sharpen you. They will edify you in everything. And I hope you can be that friend as well. And the last thing uh, as we look for those friends is I hope you find friends who will give you the gentle correction that's needed as you guys continue through life. I know I've found so many of those people in my life, and I'm so grateful. Uh, it's amazing having, having men and women of God who are that for me. And I hope and pray that you guys are able to find those friends, and I hope and pray also that you're able to be those kind of friends. I'm going to pray. I love you, Impact Crew, real quick. Father, I love you. I thank you so much. 
um, that we're still able to do this. I ask God that your word would be planted into our hearts. And Father, as we're searching for those those God-honoring friends, Lord, I ask that you would help us to ask the right questions, to be directed to the right friends, and also, God, to be the right friends as well, Father. Lord, I love you. I thank you for the impact crew. I thank you for our leaders. I thank you for our church. I thank you that you're not confined to any walls or anything of that sort. But God, that you're still moving today. It's in Jesus' name. Say it with me, Impact. Amen. Love you guys.